Hello everybody and welcome back to Drop the Clutch. This is episode six. Today Nick is below and our special guest this week is Lynn. Would you like to introduce yourself to the listeners, Lynn? Yep, my name's Lynn Murray. I've been a Speedway fan for more than 50 years. Um, I mainly follow Glasgow Tigers all my life, but I really don't care. If it's bikes, two wheels, no brakes, I'll go anywhere. Fair play. Right. Yeah, it could sounds like someone's a bit of a methanol addict. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a meth, methanol. Methanol. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get that one out there before we go. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so I've got some questions for you. Uh, okay. And then after we've answered the questions, we'll just have a bit of a conversation about any opinions in the sport and how we think like team building is going for our teams and stuff like that. So, uh, okay. First one, how did you get into Speedway originally? My grandfather a mechanic at local Speedway track and my dad watched it. So I went along from when I was about four years old pottering about the pits. I was a pit rat, sticking my fingers where they shouldn't go. <laughs> um, what's that do? <laughs> Will that hurt? Yeah. Um, and I've just, I've just grown up with it. Glasgow Tigers was the local team, but having said that, my dad also took me to Paisley Lions because Glasgow was on a Friday night and Paisley was on a Saturday night. Oh, lovely. So we used to, to go a couple of nights just to, I think it was just to give my mum a break, to be quite honest. <laughs> and my sister and I both still go, I go avidly, my sister goes, if it's Glasgow versus Edinburgh. No, nah, she's then, a derby hunter. Yeah, she's a, she's a derby hunter. I'll just go anywhere because I spent more than 30 years in England. And I was based in, in Leeds for most of that time. So I went to Bradford while it was still there. Yeah, and after Bradford disappeared, and my husband knew I went to Speedway, didn't know what it was. He just knew that I disappeared to to Bradford every so often, um, and he was left looking after the kids. So after Bradford closed, they thought, "Well, why aren't you going out so much?" I said, "Well, Bradford's closed, Speedway," and so I introduced them to it on the telly, and he thought, "Oh." Right, so I started him off with the Grand Prix. I mean, okay. It was easier to explain individual points yeah. scoring than it was to to explain to him that why one guy was hanging back deliberately to slow somebody else up in a team riding position. Mm -hmm. And I then took him to his first live speedway match at Sheffield and he got hooked. And like most new converts, you'd think he'd invented the stuff. So, yeah. so we then we regularly rotated between going to Sheffield on a Thursday because it was only an hour down the road, um, and we'd go to Scunthorpe, and we'd go to Manchester, mostly on bank holidays. We would travel up to Newcastle and Berwick because they were also at the weekends. Yeah, uh, and that so, but. If we happened to be in Scotland at the weekend, I took him along to Glasgow Tigers. And then when we, we came back to Scotland in 2018, uh, yeah, 2018, he came back. I was back 2017. So um, he thought, brilliant, that's it. This is my team, Glasgow Tigers. And that got him hooked. And he was a very, very avid collector of stuff. <laughs> I've seen some of the stuff. Yes, the way Lynn lot. said stuff then, it just said it all, didn't it? Oh, no, no, Nick, seriously, there's a lot. <laughs> oh, I believe it. It's just <laughs> the way she said stuff. <laughs> the, in fact, a lot of it is going on display at the Motherwell Heritage Museum in hmm. May of this year. Oh, wow. Um, because it, a lot of the stuff, he started collecting historical stuff, mainly from people who... Maybe their parents or grandparents had died and they, they didn't follow Speedway. They didn't know about it. 
So mm. there'd be lots of old programs, older badges, pennants, things like that. And he'd gather them all up so that they were kind of saved for posterity. You know, so he's, he's got stuff going right back to the, the 40s. Wow. You know. And most of the programmes are filled in as well, so you get a wee gist of how it went on. A lot of people right at that time wrote a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll say things like, um, oh, so-and-so won that race, but that's because he, he kicked the other guy out the way or whatever. Well, they didn't have the luxury of being able to go on YouTube and re-watch it or like, right. record the programme in and re-watch it at a later date, did they, back then? So... No for the memory's sake you'd have to make notes and if you were rich enough take photographs and whatnot yeah <clears throat> yeah Jay, there is a, there's quite a famous photograph kicking about of the first meeting at paisley lions and my dad took, well it's a, it's a little video clip and my dad took great pleasure in pointing out that's me you see that little blob there that's me <laughs> So my father has followed Glasgow Tigers since Glasgow Tigers was Ashfield Giants. Wow. Wow. So he, he's been following them since the 1940s. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. I don't think I had much option. I grew up in a speedway household. <laughs> and then once yes. I did just my husband, that was it. <laughs> it it right sounds, sounds like you were born in the pits. <laughs> <laughs> I took I took my grandchildren to to Scunthorpe where they had a, a kiddies tryout day mm -hmm. because my grandson had shown a bit of enthusiasm having watched some videos. And and we got there and he's going, no, nope, no, nope, too noisy. And if I fall off, I'll get dirty. But my granddaughter went, I want to go on now. But unfortunately they didn't have a small enough bike for her because she was only oh. Oh, I have since got in touch with it with a gentleman whose young daughter does exhibition rides around Oxford, and he said that when she gets to about four or five, he said, "Give me a shout because I've got an old bike that she can have." Nice. It's like that yeah, young girl that does the rides around Bellevue, isn't it? Yeah. I can't remember her name, but she always wears like the um, mock-up Kevlar's. Mm -hmm. I've seen her. I know the one you mean. Yeah. yeah. I think she's got Eaton on the back or something. But yeah, she's done a few rides around Bellevue in the past. Yeah. There's absolutely no reason the girls can't do it too. Which is very true. Well, yeah, they should. Yeah. Yes, give the lads a run for their money. Yeah. yeah. So I say they should. I'm all for women in all sports. Yeah, you just need to give Speedway a higher profile. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, That's a sad thing, though, because you go back to the uh, 70s and 80s and it was all over the TV and the national press, wasn't it? Yes. As the years have gone, out, gone on, it's kind of fallen more and more and more by the wayside. Yeah, the National Press used to, it was a British newspaper that provided the World Cup trophy when the World Cup, the World Individual Championship was a one-off event. Is it the same I, one that sponsors Team GB? No. No, because obviously they've got a big connection with a national paper now, haven't they, as well? Um, and they used to, the trophy... It, it, the the one-off final was a one-off final, but there were qualifying rounds to get to the one-off final. Right. Um, but the trophy, it was an, actually a bike wheel with wings on it. it I've seen it. Quite, yes. Mm. I've it's seen it. There's, pic there's pictures of... Um... Ivan Major? Yeah. Major... Craven or Collins at Bellevue yeah. outside the Peter Craven suite holding it like that. Yes, yes. I can't remember who it is, though. I'm sorry. I do apologise. Yeah, it's it's one of... could be P Peter Craven's, Peter Collins, I've made you. It's one of the three, isn't it? 
because they're both yeah. obviously all the three of them are big heroes at that club. Yes. So Peter Collins is one of my big heroes. So I've I've, I've written a message to Santa what I want to do for <laughs> Christmas. Um, Stay on the tires by any chance? It, it might be. It might be. Mm-hmm. Oh, better not let Paulina you say that. One in next friend from Bellevue, she'll be on you if she's if she knows you like Peter Collins as much as she does. Yeah. Oh, well, my memory of Peter Collins riding is he was one of those riders that you really, really wanted him to touch the tapes or be late to the tapes so that he started from 15 yards back. Yeah. Because you then knew you were in for a treat. Oh, he's, right. he, he, he's one of those writers that he starts at the back and he weaves his way through and it was it's fantastic he could do that all day every day yeah didn't Norwich Bloodhorn do that for Bellevue last season I believe he started on the 10 metre line and made yeah. it up to second yeah I was like wow <laughs> Peter Collins used to do it to first he, <laughs> he, he was notorious a bit like Bomber Bomber that never makes a start. Yeah. Very easily makes a start. And then you 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 weave through. But Peter Collins would would very often win like that. And when he did his world title, was it his, I think it was his leg that was broken or his foot. But I do know that when he, he won his world title, he attempted the blood out of his boot. Yes, I heard mm. stories of that. Yes. But he wasn't in very good shape when it came to the actual final and winning it. No. No. I mean, I, I was down in London. My father had a cousin in London. So a lot of the world final finals were held in London. It was the old Wembley, wasn't it? The old Wembley. Yeah. And I'd go down. And I was lucky enough to see Ole Olsen win his third world title oh, there. And he'd actually, he'd, Injured his wrist, he'd broken his wrist. Um, and they wouldn't let they said they weren't going to let him ride with his plaster cast on. So he just broke them off in one anyway. <laughs> so big way rider, what do you expect? <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement. What do you expect from a speedway rider? That they bounce. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We would, Ruth and I were discussing this in another podcast earlier that some of the crashes we've witnessed, and then just to see the riders walk up and go, yeah, it's like Sam, wow. Sam was telling us about a mad one his friend had seen from Mama Green, where a rider had got their hand caught in the back wheel and it had took three of their fingers off. Mm. I was like, yeah, ill for one, yeah. and he was like. And then someone was like, he was in agony. Well, of course he was in agony. He's lost three of his fingers. Now, you do know that that's the only, the only injury Greg Hancock's ever had. Really? When, he, when his hand got caught under the wheel of Niels Chris Beaverson's bike at the Grand Prix. Wow. It didn't rip his fingers off, but it did damage them. Yeah. Yeah, I remember watching that crash. It looked nasty. It looked very nasty at the time. Yeah, can't say I saw it to be honest. But it went under the uh, mud flap at the back. So you know, look, there's like a plastic mud guard on just over the back yeah. wheel. It went in under the Ooh. plastic flap, and his hand got pulled in. Yeah. Ooh. Yes, I'm. I'm really. I'm really looking forward to this season, though. Yeah. I can't that wait for it. moves me on to another question. Are you happy with the riders your team has for next season? So far. Yeah. So far. Well, no, we've got all seven now at Glasgow. Oh, have you got a full team announced now, have you? We, we've got we got Santa Claus in the end. <laughs> oh, you did, didn't oh, we? Yeah. Don't get me started on him. <laughs> but having said that, I mean, when... When I was at the the World Speedway Riders dinner in in Leicester, and I was speaking to your man from Birmingham, and I, I said that I was really hoping Klaus Fissing would come back to Glasgow, 
And he said, well, be careful what you wish for. You might well get it, he said. And hopefully he'll do better for you than he did for us. Hopefully there's somebody to keep an eye on him up there. Yeah. But uh, no, we've got the three Bs. We've got Tom Brennan, Ben Basso, Bomber. Oh. Mm. All right. And we've got Martin Novak and Lee Complin. It's a pretty good team. Yeah. We've got points of this thing. And who am I missing? Not Klaus. You better not go missing again. Right. <laughs> Bomber, Brennan, and Basso. Martin Novak. Lee Complin, close this. Oh, yeah, Ace Piper. Oh. Ace Piper. Um, Go on, Ace. He's making moves. Oh, he is. And um, now, we're a little concerned because we have a line around Glasgow known as the Ben Basso line that's halfway up the fence. Mm. Yeah, similar um, to the Max Frick line or the Dan yes. line at Bellevue. Yes, <laughs> Three riders in the Grand Prix qualifier at Glasgow tried the Ben Basso line and spectacularly failed at Ben yep. Basso line and were subsequently injured. All in the one match. They all thought, well, Ben Basso can do it, we can do it, and no, they couldn't. <laughs> nope. Um, now, we know Ben can do it. Bomber will try it. Marcin Novak does an undercut. Hmm. Lee Complin is game for anything. Yeah. Lee Complin is Lee Complin. He'll try it. Like you say, he'll try anything. He'll try anything. He'll ride the top of the air fences if you give him a chance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ace Piper, I think, well, Ace Piper, from what I've seen, is he's very determined. Mm -hmm. when we saw him at Birmingham under 21 and he was a last minute addition he came out hadn't a clue about the track never seen it in his puff and he went out and the first wasn't great came off and I think it was the second that he touched the tapes which is we've ordered extra tapes because that's AC's party trick <laughs> when he came out for his third ride he'd got his, he'd got his act together and he actually, if he'd scored a single point in his first two rides, he would have been in the quarter, the semi-finals. But... Wow. Saying that, though, I think he was like that at Bellevue when you came up that time, Ruth, when they did the uh, two meetings at the Dust Bowl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He was, yeah. They did, they did the Colts meeting, didn't they? And they had, like, the under-21s. It was the British Youth Championship, afterwards. yeah. Yeah, that's right. And Ace had a bit of a mare, but once he, like you say, Liam, once he'd sorted his act out, he just yeah. flew around the NSS. Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah, he, like, he takes a couple of heats to, to get his act together and then mm -hmm. bang. But he dusted off, like, Freddie Hodder and the McGurks, and it was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And so Ace is in Glasgow, and he's also um, at... Working. Workington. Yeah. Um, and the Workington yeah, building have a team. Workington have announced six riders and they're saving the best to last, in my humble opinion. Hmm. They, can't have, they can't have Dan Bewley. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But um, th this is going to after Christmas Eve, yeah. I've oh, got yeah. a pretty good idea I might know who it is because you've already yeah. told me. Yes. It's it's Connor, Connor Bailey. Is Oh, is that where he's that's, going? That's where he's going. Oh. oh. It's all been a bit hush-hush. Yep. Um, because they were trying to make because they were trying to make sure that other people weren't picking up on their interest in them. Mm -hmm. um, because, uh, as you know, he's off to Rockslav. Year, yes, he's riding in there under 21s, isn't it? And they're under 24s. Oh, so 24, sorry. He's under the mentorship of Greg Hancock. Wow. Could you want anyone better? No, you, you, you couldn't. And um, 
and you mentioned Dan Bewley, I, I was talking to, to, to him in November as well, mm-hmm. and he said, oh, he said, you're the lady that deals with Connor Bailey? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I understand. This is before any of the news was public. He said, I understand. I'll be, be seeing a lot, of, a lot of you next year then. Now, whether he was referring to me or Connor, I'm not sure, but either way, I know that when Roxlav came calling, they they seemed to think that they needed to entice him. <laughs> and, really? Yes. Yeah. Please and come and ride with us. We only have Magic Yanofsky, Ty Woffenden and Dan Bewley, but, you know, come please ride for us. <laughs> what they said was that they had, they already had two British riders in the main squad yeah. offered to help him settle in. Well, the, yeah, Woofy did it for Bewley. He'll yeah. do it for anyone. Yeah. And obviously Dan's such a cool kid. He yeah. will help anyone. And I know that Dan has been helping Steve Lawson out a lot. When he's been testing out the track a bit. Of course, because Steve yes. Lawson helped Dan after his injury. Well, Dan Bewley currently holds the track record at Northside. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he's quite good at, hold- at getting them, isn't he? He is. I think it's Ruslav. <laughs> he's got no, both of them at Bellevue, Premiership and National League. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. Yeah. yeah he's, a, he's, a, he's a good kid, is Dan. He really? is. The few times that I've managed to actually catch a word with him, mm-hmm. he just seems so down to earth and chill. Yeah. yeah. I, I spoke to him at Motorcycle Live about our podcast and um, he said, oh, yeah, I'll check it out. And when you're a bit bigger, I'll happily come on as a guest. And I was just stood there and into, in like inside I exploded with excitement. <laughs> I was like, what? Huh? Okay. Yeah. I, was a bit spe- I was a bit speechless for like five minutes after because I was just stunned into silence. Yeah. Need to get some hats made so that when I'm at work, I can be like, "Yo, Dan." <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm joking there, obviously, because it's just funny and obviously what I do at work. So. No, I'm I'm working on it. It's something I'm working on doing because I want one as well. Well, yeah, I would have to send Lynn one just because it's Lynn. Well, obviously. Uh-huh. Then about what? getting dropped the clutch hats. All right, yes. <laughs> and whatever other merch we can afford at the time. <laughs> because it was it was actually Talking Wheels that inspired us to do this, so I suppose we yeah. owe a lot to that, don't we, Nick? Yeah, indeed. Yes. Yeah. yeah, well, it's... it's merchandise is quite... It can be quite expensive, but you need to inspect it to accumulate if if you're going that way. And it's not only that, there's plenty of like websites and companies out there that will just print slash make to order as well. Yeah, so we don't yeah. have to buy a thousand t shirts. We can just yeah. set up an agreement with said place and be like, we'll just send them through as and when they come. I may yeah. or may not have one already in Coventry. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's um, I mean, my dad was good. Oh, you've got all this stuff because the girls I keep calling his merchandise here, and he's going, Well, what if he's not riding for Glasgow Tigers next year? And I'm going, Did you see anything here that says Glasgow Tigers on it? It all says Connor Bailey Racing, he yeah, does. like the Tom Brennan stuff that he had for Cardiff, yeah, it says Tom Brennan Cardiff, so it's. Yeah, you know, or TBR seven. Yeah, twenty seven. Twenty seven, even sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. So, at least corners is perennial. The only thing that it's he's got calendars out, which is obviously the team he rode for in the last year. Mm-hmm. Um and jigsaws again. Oh, <laughs> jigsaws, that's cool. Oh, the, 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 jigs- the jigsaws are very cool. I've been sitting doing them. There's, there's, there's three of them, three different oh, designs. You'll have to send me some pictures. Yeah, I've, I've, only, I've only actually built one. 
Um, and it's just it's so cool. Um, I said, Connor's coming around on Boxing Day, so I've, I've left it built up just to let him see it built up. Nice. Nice. You know, because it, it's, it's dead, dead cool. But we've already had inquiries from, for the sports squad from Poland. Not just Polish people that happen to live in the UK, actually from Polish people that live in Poland. Brilliant. So, so I need to get my act together and work out how the thing to make this thing on the website work and get the form set <laughs> for people and details of how to actually donate. Yeah. I'm just I'm just struggling with that at the moment. Because when I when at last the last time I had anything to do with website building, you just took a load of HTML code and, and, and wrote your website, but that's not how it works these days. I you can do it that way. You can do it that way, but um yeah. there's a lot more programming languages exist these days that a lot of people tend to lean towards more. Yes. And you know, and I wanted it, it hosted on, on a, a professional platform because sooner or later, touch wood. It's going to get too big for me to handle. Hopefully. Well, yeah, yeah that's that's what everyone hopes for, isn't it? Yeah. So, so I want I want to have a professional product that I can hand over to someone, and that that means it's not it's not my my bespoke code. It it's professional. Yeah. Level, so they can they can change it to themselves. All all they need is my password. Yeah. You know, so it's. I'd love to have this get that big that we wouldn't have to do it ourselves, but I'd be nice. <laughs> oh, wouldn't it just? Oh, yeah. You need us to record that episode. Yeah, that's fine. When's the next episode going out? I don't know. Somebody else does that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. The t- we've been given a time, running out of time pop up already. I can't believe how quick that's gone. I know. Thank you. How did that happen? I blame you, Lynn. Yeah, pro- pro- probably because when I did a few of these with, with talking wheels, and I think you seem to fall into these by accident. Yeah. Um, it's he ended up recording several episodes and it was just him and I talking. And hmm. he would chop bits, and whenever he'd be done of a podcast to put out, he would chop one of them out. Fair enough. Fair enough. We'll, we'll definitely look into getting you back in the new year. Definitely. Yeah. We're swapping to a new system in the new year, so we we won't be using Zoom next year. We'll be using something else. So. Like 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 what? Because what do I need to get? Uh, <laughs> we'll tell you lo- when it happens. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking like Google Meet because that's a lot easier to use. All right. I mean, I use Microsoft Teams at, at work. Oh, I use that at work. It's quite good. I've heard of Google Teams vaguely. It's it's fairly easy to use. All you got to do is whack in a meeting ID and maybe even a password, and then you away. But yeah, yeah. So this, I think, I I mean, the lockdown wasn't great, but it certainly brought on an awful lot of online stuff. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's not as clunky as it was when the lockdown first first started. This is true. And it's a lot more to choose from as well now. Yeah. This is very It's true. not like Facebook have the monopoly anymore, is it? For example, there's so many more services and whatever to use. Yeah. Should we do a quick to sign off and then we can just... Yeah, continue. might as well. <laughs> okay, well... Thanks for joining us, everybody. That was episode six of Drop the Clutch. It's bye from me. See you on the next episode. Bye. See you later. See you later.